In the summer of 2020, the Walt Disney Company began requiring employees to keep DEI virtue diaries in order to prove that they were pristine enough. Not only that, it turns out that their salaries, their money, their compensation was tied to this. It goes even farther. Folks, we have a huge expose. All of this according to a whistleblower, a Disney insider who has come forth with information, with documents, and we're ready to expose the entire thing. Strap in. It's going to be a big week here on the Pro Channel and the Valiant Renegade Channel. Let's get started right now. All right, folks, welcome back to another day here on the WDW Pro Channel. It is a joy every time you elect to join us. And folks, if you wouldn't mind, click that like button, share, subscribe. When you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. We are about to bring forth one of the biggest scoops we have ever done on the channel. We are bringing the data, we're bringing the information to you regarding what could be one of the biggest changes at Disney that re resulted in it going down. Joining me to talk about this huge bit of news is Valiant Renegade of Valiant Renegade, Lorena Creole, and of thatparkplace.com, we have Jonas J. Campbell, the investigative reporter for that site. And Jonas, we anticipate that we will have an article forthcoming as well on the website regarding all of this. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. We like to bring the receipts whenever possible. Absolutely. And let's dive into the receipts right now. Folks, yes, as we said at the top, it is our, our understanding now, although we cannot independently verify and corroborate this, although much of it we can, but this specifically we cannot. It is now our understanding that at Disney since the summer of 2020, many employees of the company have been required to maintain their various virtuous actions within diversity, equity, in, and inclusion, and that that diary of their good deeds was part of maintaining their job security. But not only that, but in fact, it also was tied to their job compensation, if you can believe it. We're talking about bonuses that you might not receive if you went afoul of Tom Newton, the prior chief diversity officer of Disney, if you went afoul of her belief systems. Let's go now to a document that we have received. This called Closing Women's History Month celebrating her story. And we go to this document because this was part of a training program that was provided to uh, different parts of the Disney company. And if we take a look at uh, what was all available for you to prove that you were indeed virtuous, you needed to attend some of these things so that your manager could give you five gold stars for doing so well. Let's take a look at some of these opportunities that were given via the Disney women's bergs. These bergs, by the way, are groups of employees that uh, are used then to funnel through some of these DEI initiatives. You had the Women's History Month opening ceremony, uh, ceremony Women mm -hmm. at Disney Book Discussion, Inclusion Network, Letting Out Your Inner She-Hulk, Women Plus Tech Virtual <laughs> Panel, Securing a Seat at the Table, International Women's Day, Celebrating Her Story with Christine McCarthy, The Future of Black Culture and Consumer Products, Disney Benefits, Women's Heart and Wellness Webinar or Health and Web, uh, Wellness Webinar, and life beyond likes. Not only that, though, in this same meeting, which, by the way, folks, we are told that these meetings, these culture corners, if you will, that in mm -hmm. these meetings, uh, employees could expect to spend 15 to 30 minutes of their productive weeks being, well, less than productive as they sat through these things. What do we have here? Well, this is uh, a slide, a piece of information at this, this culture corner training seminar where you were taught how to respect Islam with things such as this. Instead of saying, you poor thing, it must be so difficult for you about uh, not eating in your normal pattern during Ramadan, you might say to someone, uh, I have so much admiration for your commitment to your faith. And so, or, or how come you're not fasting like the others? You might say, nothing at all. No one should have to justify the reasons for not fasting. This, by the way, uh, continues on into more slides. And one of the things that our whistleblower has said is that you would never see anything like this for Christianity. You would never see anything like this uh, for Easter, for example. This was just within the preferred bits and pieces of what the DEI department wanted to do. Let's stop here and go to the panel and find out your thoughts. Valiant, this is not so far yet 
uh, too different from the corporate culture that we see across America. We're going to get to some stuff that is extremely unique to what Disney did. But your thoughts on this on this first document so far? Well, I mean, this is not terribly surprising, but at the same time, it's it's amazing to watch it, you know, on the screen. Um, this is another bit of Disney just destroying its own brand, destroying itself from the inside out. And the problem is, instead of just making good products and selling them to general audiences, everything is now built around this notion that it has to fit inside of a socio-political spectrum that a few wackos at the top of Disney have decided. Uh, and this is what has killed the brand. And it's going to continue to kill the brand. And what we're about to get into is just going to show you how and why this happened over the last few years. Yes, and I also want to say that our whistleblower is actually watching and listening in as we have this conversation. And uh, the whistleblower would like for us to also note to the public that you would never see anything for Passover either. Um, <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Christianity and Judaism, um, no, that's white and evil, I'm sure. Um, so, or whatever. They right. Uh, the, the one thing I'll, I'll say is over the last few years, especially religious exemptions have uh, come into the in, into the conversation in a way that they haven't in the past. And uh, the phrase, I respect your commitment to your faith, or being encouraged to say, I respect your commitment to your faith, is probably not uh, the kind of thing that Disney HR would be known for. There were incidents at ESPN, in fact, when uh, religious exemptions for um, mm -hmm. medical situations were not respected. I don't want to bring that aspect into it specifically by name, but uh, my goodness, uh, Absolutely. And as we talk about this, let's bring in another member of our uh, uh, piece of journalism here we have. We'll bring in Lorne Connor. Of course, he frequents thatparkplace.com, writes about Star Wars, Lucasfilm, etc. And uh, Lorne is not the whistleblower, but we're happy to have him on the panel with us. <laughs> I, I want to say this before we go to Lorena. Lorena, one of the things that we know is that these types of meetings were not required necessarily, but if you didn't go to them, it could put your job at risk, especially if your manager began to dock you uh, for not being the proper DEI espouser that you're supposed to be. And then beyond that, the other thing that we know is that Tom Newton's department, the DEI department, apparently mm -hmm. would call these meetings frequently when there was breaking news within the political realm. And then they would... Uh, espouse beliefs and how you should believe about things in the political realm, always in one side. But one of the most fascinating things that our whistleblower tells us is that mm -hmm. when the leaked videos of Reimagine Tomorrow came out, which they were required to watch, by the way, so they knew they were real, mm -hmm. but when the Reimagine Tomorrow videos ca came out through independent journalist Christopher Rufo, apparently, the whistleblower tells us that Tom Newton's department declared that that was fake news and that Disney employees should not pay attention to or uh, propagate fake news online. So, Lorena, we now know what Disney's internal response was to Christopher Rufo. Your thoughts? Wow. I <laughs> All I can say is, wow. I remember when the Reimagine Tomorrow thing uh, broke. With that, with all of that, and the videos and everything, it just couldn't believe just how far that uh, that they were taking this. But for Tan Newton to turn around and basically tell her people, "Oh, it's fake news. Don't pay attention to it. Don't you know? Don't believe it." To me, it seems like it's like they're trying to control their own people. And I, I don't get that. I work in corporate America. Yes, you know, you have your diversity and inclusion initiatives that are out there, but my company would not dare tell people what to say. And then the you crazy know. thing on top of this, Lorena, is that, yes, they told, uh, they told them about the fake news, but now what we're, we're learning is that these kinds of meetings that would be called impromptu and would take out of your productive uh, time that you could actually be working. Yeah. These were tied to bonuses and we're going to bring that forth in just a little bit in documentation, <laughs> but these were tied to bonuses. So if you did not participate in Tom Newton's little political escapades, mm -hmm. then 
you could be docked and you could lose money in your, your salary. So this was not only would you then lose the opportunity to do things to earn your bonus in legitimate ways, because now you can't be calling clients, you can't be doing the things that help you get ahead in your job. But oh yeah, if you don't do this, we'll also dock you money because you're not uh, you're not part of the, the team. You're not a team player in all of this. So no good all around, I would say. Jonas, is, uh, is there anything that I'm missing on this particular topic before we move on to the next? Uh, no, just that uh, employees would be expected to keep a record if they wanted to prove their status uh, as far as uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion goes, uh, when the company, uh, uh, sorry, when the perf when performance reviews would come up, they would be expected to provide their own case for how they performed as far as the DEI metrics go. And I'm so sorry. they would have to keep a journal of their DEI activities within the company <laughs> and without uh, in order to show their case for diversity, Lauren, equity, and inclusion. Lauren, does it surprise you that starting in the summer of 2020, the Disney company, in regards to their employees, treated them as guilty until they could prove their innocence in regards to DEI, and that they had to collect a diary to take to their managers to prove that they were good uh, and pleasing DEI citizens for the mouse? No, I think that there's been rumors floating around about this for a while. I've heard similar things secondhand and thirdhand, but nothing from anybody that actually was employed by the company. So the fact that material like this is coming out now isn't really surprising. It seems similar to kind of what we've heard about some of their struggle sessions that they had uh, mm -hmm. with people like Gina. This this is cult-like behavior. And so this is kind of what we're seeing. So right. I, am I surprised? No. Uh, I, I don't think it's particularly shocking after anything that we've heard about Disney over the last few years. It's just sad. I don't think anything like this is what Walt would have wanted for his company. So, well, let, let's open this next point up to the panel. Uh, freeform conversation here. Take it as you will. Uh, the next thing that we are told by the whistleblower, and folks, we are going to get to the documents in just a moment. The next thing we are told is that if you espoused, starting in the summer of 2020 and moving forward until today, if you espouse political beliefs in the workplace or outside the workplace or on social media, in, uh, and those political or sociocultural beliefs, did not align with very far left views, then you could expect to be uh, sent to HR to have some serious conversations and discussions. Um, so if you went beyond not just filling out your Word doc where you had uh, DEI requirements noted for your MBO document, let's say, and instead you were actually on social media saying that you supported some sort of conservative value, mm -hmm. you were going to be brought into HR. and in doing this, the Walt Disney Company seems to have eliminated the vast majority of their conservative employees and have turned the company into a monolithic kind of state where everyone there is either uh, far to the left on the spectrum or they are a moderate or conservative in hiding. In fact, the whistleblower says that if they had known what working like Disney would be like, that it would have devastated them because they dreamed of working for Disney for so long once they received mm -hmm. the job and they actually worked at Disney that it was a nightmare and that they had never worked at any company like this that had them do these things and tied it into their pay. Open, open conversation about this now, though, the idea that conservatives and moderates could be marched into HR for making statements that were not in line with the, the company's far left political policies. Well, when one side is completely tolerated and the other side is pulled into an office to answer for their opinions, it makes it very clear how the company <laughs> how the company stands and how they expect all of their employees to speak. Well, it's not just a matter of being tolerated, it's the matter of being, you know, having one side that is empowered to quite frankly violently suppress the other side. Um I'll talk more about that later. <laughs> but, to, but, to kind, but to kind of go into what Valiant was saying, I mean, I, I'm, I'm picturing this in my head because I, you know, I work in corporate America, getting hauled into HR because I happen to say something that is not aligning with, let's say, the leftist belief of a particular company. What that tells me is that you don't really believe in diversity. What happened to diversity of thought? 
Why is that an issue? Why is it that because I have a differing opinion, what does that have to do with me doing my job as I'm supposed to be doing my job? Unless your objective is not to have the best and the brightest. Your objective is not to have a diverse workforce. Your objective is to have a workforce that you can control and that will parrot every single thing that you want. Well, it seems that when Ta Newton was brought in and when she was given this immense power in the summer of 2020, what seems to have happened is that she used this power to drive out the conservative and moderate voices of the company. And the issue there is from a deeply philosophical standpoint, no company wants to have all of their workers be of one mindset. That is a that is a recipe for absolute disaster. So when we see the box office drop 70% from 2019 mm -hmm. to 2023, when we see the parks dropping like they are, that probably comes, and these bad decisions probably come from the fact that you drove away the important voices who might have attempted to conserve the values of the company by virtue of the fact they're conservative. And, and likewise, if, it, if this had went in the opposite direction, it would have been awful. If you drove away all the people who are liberal, then you would have driven away the people who are most likely to come up with good changes. But when you drive out one side or the other completely from your company, you leave it bereft of the ability to check itself by having some sort of internal dialogue that competes one with another. And so this has just turned into a monolithic mental state at Disney of change, 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 and conserve nothing. Lauren, seemed like you had a thought on that. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of the legal implications of hauling somebody into an HR meeting uh, about the opinions that they're espousing. I have a hunch that the conversations in the office are going probably not like you have invalid opinions. It's probably more like we don't see you as a team player. And exactly. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. uh, there, you're, you're making some people a little bit uncomfortable. You know, it'll be vague, squishy things like that that are subtext to allow them to justify. It's like, well, you're just not fitting in. You know, that that's the kind of corporate speak that I think they'd be going into. Um, it'd be interesting if we could get some kind of information about what was actually said during those meetings. Well, and then this goes to another layer in which uh, apparently mm -hmm. someone, and I'm not going to say this person's name in Disney because I don't, I, I want to be careful here. Um, I'll just say that it's someone who's, well, I won't even say that. There's an individual under Tom Newton who apparently also instituted a new process by which to hire people. And mm. th that hiring process as part of the DEI initiative stripped out the need for a significant number of applicants to meet any kind of criteria whatsoever. So, and then also perhaps there was an effort um, to make sure that such candidates received uh, uh, a higher chance of being approved in large numbers. We'll, we'll say that. Valiant thoughts there? Sorry, I was muted. Um, <clears throat> Look, I, I, I think it's it's a mess right now. You cannot run a business based on uh, non-business factors. You cannot run a business based on feelings and emotions and wanting to drive social change. This is a problem across corporate America. It's not just Disney, although I will say that the Walt Disney Company certainly is in much more of the limelight more so than anybody else because they're a big entertainment company. So you see the products on the big screen, you see them on the television as opposed to a 15 second commercial from Bud Light, for example. Uh, we saw what the backlash was for that. But with the Walt Disney Company, I mean, this is just, uh, it's another effect of a systematic problem that corporate America has. Although I think that to be fair, the Walt Disney Company has pushed things harder and further than most other companies. And I think that has happened because bad forces out there in the world and in society that want to change things for the worse to denigrate society down to its base elements of not being able to think for themselves are going to leverage a company like Disney to foist this type of garbage into American and global societies across the board because it's Disney. It's a brand that everybody knows. It's a brand everybody trusts, right? If we can corrupt Disney to this level, 
we're, we're in. That's their thought process. That is where we are. And we're seeing this happen in real time. We're seeing this happen in the numbers, in the metrics that we're looking at now with advertising and everything they produce. There you go. Valiant, does it, uh, is it a shock at all then that when the Christopher Rufo leaks came out about Reimagine Tomorrow where you had Disney employees who were, by the way, what we're looking at, these are the training sessions, right? Yep. So in one of those training sessions, they came out and said, you know, that we had a not so secret agenda regarding kids. Mm -hmm. Is it a surprise then that the response that came within 24 hours at Disney in one of these additional training sessions where you have to be in there, that the response to that was, don't pay attention to fake news. Don't right. believe your lying eyes. Don't, don't believe the sessions we just put you through that said this exact same <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Leaked out. Don't believe what we just did. It's the same idea that if, if somebody takes a hidden camera and walks into a certain kind of medical clinic and just records what's going on and then puts eight hours of this footage out on the internet, that it's fake news. It's not. It's like, I mean, this is, this is the level of cultism and insanity that some people out there have been dragged into believing. It's nuts. No, most Americans, most people out there are intelligent enough to recognize, no, this isn't right. Something's very, very wrong here. And all you can do if you're on the other side, when your entire job in life, that you're paid a million dollars or whatever the hell a year, you, that you're paid to do is to lie to people and to brainwash them. Well, what is your response going to be to something like that? It's going to be to tell more lies and engage in more brainwashing. So let's go take a look now at the uh, other document that we need to see that sort of verifies what we're talking about in terms of DEI starting in 2020 being tied to mm -hmm. the compensation that employees of Disney would receive. We're taking a look right now at a document from 2022 called Disney Ad Sales, Incentive Compensation Plan for sale, Sales Partnership. And it talks about the plan objectives and principles. Uh, the plan is outlined with these uh, major points, simplicity, motivating, collaboration, fair and equitable, pay for performance. Okay, fair enough, right? It looks very much like these sort of corporate documents that you would get. So mm -hmm. no biggie there. Now, Until, equitable, does that mean that they that when there's a bonus that they share it with everyone else? <laughs> well, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be something? Um, <laughs> but here's how it actually works. When we're talking about these uh, the payout mechanics, those are operated through MBO. So when you're talking about the bonuses, uh, not the, the 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 standard salary, but the bonuses that are applied to these individuals based on what they do, to some degree that comes from their uh, success or lack of success when it came to doing their job. However, beyond the typical thing that you would usually see, the normal rubrics for how you did, you would go into these additional MBO categories that had, well, more, what should we say, uh, esoteric ideas behind them. Mm -hmm. But we can see how these uh, percentages played out on how you would be paid for your MBO success. And if we go down, we'll scroll down here to this page. Let's take a look at one of the MBOs which exists for Walt or for the uh, Walt Disney Company employees. It says champion diversity, equity and inclusion. This is now an MBO and remember folks, we talked about how compensation is now tied for these employees to promoting and parroting DEI and avoiding any kind of political positions that might alienate you from the intelligentsia of Disney. So here's what's inside champion diversity, equity, and inclusion. It says create an inclusive environment with the opportunities for people to develop and thrive. People managers have further impact and responsibilities to shape uh, Disney ad services culture or ad sales, excuse me. Uh, and here are some of the examples of, of what you must do in order to receive your pay, your full pay and your bonus. Personally participate in trainings and other educational D and I initiatives. Remember we've talked about these, the culture corner was one example that we gave these mm -hmm. could last 15, 30 minutes, whatever, and they were bi-weekly. Actively contribute to creating an inclusive and positive team environment, support colleagues from all backgrounds. Okay, fair enough. I support that. Mm -hmm. Provide and support opportunities for underrepresented talent to grow their careers within the Walt Disney Company through opportunities such as mentorship, sketch and special projects, career conversations, and cross-trainings. 
create an inclusive team environment through actions such as prioritizing, promoting, and sponsoring attendance at or in DNI focused initiatives, hosting team based discussions on inclusion, and enabling all voices to be heard within a team department. Provide opportunities for underrepresented talent to join our organization by ensuring that for open positions on the manager's team, that there are a, a diverse and balanced state or slate of candidates considered at interview. So those are some of the examples of what championing diversity, equity, and inclusion looked like at Disney starting in the summer of 2020. And yes, folks, we have seen the evidence. We can corroborate that this did not exist prior. This was brand new, brought in in 2020. Let's go to the panel again about all of this. Uh, take it away, guys. What do you think? I'll also add a little bit of information from our discussion with the whistleblower is that uh, mm -hmm. they were encouraged to bring in diverse candidates with a much lower emphasis on qualification for the role. Even to the degree, Joan, even to the degree that if someone did not meet the criteria or the prerequisites, if they were unable to perform the job, if they were if they fell into one of these DEI categories determined by the Walt Disney Company, they had to be processed as an applicant. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Wow. I, first of all, I work in technology. This would not fly. This would not fly if someone tells me, you know, hey, you have to have a balanced slate of uh, candidates for a particular position. It's just like, no, who's the strongest technical candidates? That's what we want. We're not putting, you know, some just diverse thing together with people who cannot meet the criteria for it for the position. That just looks, number one, shooting yourself in the foot talent wise. So basically you want to have people considered without the type of experience that you need. And then when they start screwing up, then what? Then what do you, you know, then what do you do? And and and, if, and we all know the review process for a diverse candidate is so much more straightforward, is it not? in the cor current corporate environment? Well, and I also want to say too, as we answer that question, we are just getting word from the whistleblower who, by the way, for those of you uh, watching, we the whistleblower is with us, not on camera, not, not uh, on audio, but is assisting us mm -hmm. to make sure that we uh, carry all of this inf uh, information accurately. The whistleblower says that the applicants we just discussed who met the DEI categories that Disney wanted, even if they were not qualified in any way, they were prioritized. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so, I, so, I, I just, I, I just can't, I just can't with, cause the, the type of, in, again, this is Disney, but just from another industry in it, that's a, that's a, that's a specialized skill set, and we really don't have the time to bring in people without the necessary qualifications to just start screwing up all over the place. No, that's just that's just not going to work. And the other thing that I saw about you know requiring that people attend these DEI um, these DEI workshops in my tech in my space. That wouldn't happen. People are way too busy to uh, to do this. And even the DEI will say rubric for my particular company. I'm allowed to come up with my own so long as it's diversity and inclusion. And mine is basically, you know, respecting all opinions and points of view, making sure everyone has a voice, not to dictate to people that you have to sit through this indoctrination two or three times a week and have that tied to your bonus pay. That is, that is, I, I, it just blows my mind hearing that. Absolutely. All right. So um, we've got this, this uh, situation with Disney. We've been wondering how did the company fall so fast, so far? And uh, well, I think we're finding out it was a systematic systemic uh, uh, set of protocols put in place by the DEI department in Disney. Of course, there are other issues, but they wiped out a huge part of their corporate institutional knowledge. They wiped out the people who might disagree with changing the company radically. 
They hired the people who would be most likely to agree with radical changes, and they subjected their employees to a pseudo-religious, um, what would you say, DEI diary to attempt to abdicate themselves of their sins and become part of the church of wokeology. Right, to prove Final their place. Final thoughts from everyone on the panel. <laughs> to prove their place in the structure and their fealty to the cause. Well, uh, honestly, this, Final this thoughts sounds... everybody. This sounds like diversity multi-level marketing. This honestly sounds in a lot of ways like an MLM <laughs> kind of a scheme, just internal to your corporate structure. You're not wrong. <clears throat> All right. Well, folks, we will leave it there. However, this conversation is going to continue. We have more. That's right. You are going to find even more on the Valiant Renegade channel. I don't know if you've heard of, heard of that before. It's a, a little growing <laughs> channel. Few subs, few subs. Way more than this channel, by the way, folks. We're just teasing a little bit. But uh, part two continues on the Valiant Renegade channel. Do not miss it as we continue to expose what has happened to the Walt Disney Company that has brought it down to its Mickey Mouse knees. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. For more exclusive content such as this, consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button. It is the price of a soda per month and you'll get all kinds of additional videos you can't see anywhere else. The conversation here, well, it has come to a close, but the commentary begins. Drop your thoughts down below. We covet your comments. We care about what you think. And as we continue forth, yes, we have far, far more that will be coming out the rest of this week in regards to the Walt Disney Company and what happened to dive and drive this once great corporation down to the depths it currently resides in. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Ah, Floral, it's time for you to walk the plank. What? Why? Because you, you haven't subscribed to WDW Pro yet. Nor bookmark that parkplace.com on your web browser to get great articles from great contributors. What? Thank you.